Okay, so I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Um, I see questions about it online all the time, and I get questions about it a, lo a lot, and uh, my friends are always asking me about it, and it used to make no sense to me either. So who has done this? Who has gotten their hat together, their line, their fly rod, sandwich pack, water bottle, all this stuff in your truck, in your car, and you're driving to the river? Driving, driving, driving. Get to the river, and... It's super high. Where's your rocks? Where's the shoals? Your spot is blown out. In this video, I'm gonna help you avoid that. We're going to learn how to understand the tailwater levels, how to understand water gauges online, and when to fish, where to fish on a tailwater fishery. Everything, everything hinges on this. Everything to do with your fishing on a tailwater is determined by the releases from the dam that forms your tailwater. If you primarily fish a tailwater fishery and you don't get this or don't think it's important, you simply will never know what you're doing or um, really catch fish in any mean meaningful way um, consistently. It's as simple as that. So you got to understand this. So lean in, pay attention and get your notes out because this is going to be your tailwater masterclass. So what is a tailwater? A tailwater is a fishery that comes out of the bottom of a big lake. Um, lake Lanier serves as a big reservoir for the rain and water feeding down from North Georgia. Coming out of the bottom of that dam at Lake Lanier is the Chattahoochee River. This is the tailwater. Other tailwater fisheries off the top of my head are the San Juan River in New Mexico, Blue River in Colorado, and the Tacoa tailwater in North Georgia that comes out of Lake Blue Ridge. So there's two things you need to consider when fishing a river, be it a tailwater or not. Mainly the water level and the turbidity. The water level, this is obvious. Um, it's how high the water is. As a wading fisherman, you want weightable flows. So generally water that's knee to um, waist high and a lot of rocks and shoals to, you know, get around on. Um, that's kind of what you're looking for. And that's what we mean by weightable flows in terms of water level. I generally check the water level by looking at something that's called the gauge height. This means there's a ruler or a gauge on the river that measures in feet how deep the water is at that spot and they're placed along the river at various places. Secondly, I mentioned the turbidity. Um, this is a fancy term for how muddy is the water. Similar to the gauge height, this is measured at certain spots along the river uh, with a number between like one and something like 10,000. Generally, below 10 is best um, for the Chattahoochee below Buford Dam. I don't know if that number applies across the nation, but generally below 10 is best in terms of turbidity. You can go up exponentially and get a little crazy from there, but generally below 10 is best. Thankfully, here in 2020 with a tailwater fishery, uh, all of these things, the water level and the turbidity are basically controlled by man and told to you ahead of time on the internet. So there's four steps that I'm gonna go through now that you check online or you call a number and this is kind of how you set up your fishing trip on the tailwater. So pull out your phone here and follow along um, and bookmark these tabs so you can just come back to them in the future. Um, the first website you need to check is the planned release schedule. So that's like spatialdata.sam.usace and I'm gonna have that in the description below. So when you go to uh, the website in the description of this video, you will see the following. So this is the planned schedule um, for hydropower generation at Buford Dam. There's generally two types of flows for Buford Dam, low and extremely high. So um, right here you can see there's seven, that means low in terms of megawatts, and it's a low cubic feet per second flow. Um, then it goes up all the way to 127. Basically anything above seven in this chart over here on the left means really extremely high. You should not be trying to fish during that generation. Uh, it's Friday and you want to fish tomorrow at Jones Bridge. Where can you fish? Well, what's the first website you need to go to to figure that out? When you first come to this site, it should be blank like this. You'll pick Buford Dam like we showed earlier. And you wanna make sure to go 
it, it will often default to the current day, so you want to make sure to go to the next day if it's Friday and you're wanting to fish tomorrow at Jones Bridge. So it refreshed and it pulled up your times here. So it looks like tomorrow on Saturday, um, the release will start at 6 a.m. Okay, so we need to figure out when that water will reach Jones Bridge. To do so, we need to next go to our map and figure out how far it is between Buford Dam and Jones Bridge. Second thing you'll need to do is call a phone number. This is the same information you just saw online. You're just going to call to verify it matches the website you just checked. 770-945-1466. This might sound overly cautious to some of you. Well, it's not. The website cannot be relied upon to be 100% accurate. So don't end up dead because you didn't call the generation schedule line and they released water and you were down downstream in front of it. Number three, a map. So the third thing you have to do is look at a map of the Chattahoochee River and calculate the distance in river miles between Buford Dam and where you're going to fish. So you're going to visit your second website now to get the map. It is also in the description below and it's labeled map. Okay, so now we are at the map. Um, the website is nps.gov slash chat slash plan your visit. You have Lake, Lake Sydney Lanier here at the top. So each time you see 347, 346, 345, 344 in pink, that's another river mile. So to calculate how long it's gonna take water to leave Buford Dam and reach the spot on the river where you're going to fish, you divide the number of river miles between Buford Dam and the spot where you're planning to fish by four. And that's going to give you how long it's gonna take in hours for the water to reach your fishing spot. Okay, the last website, this is the fourth step. Uh, this is the real-time water gauges and turbidity data. So you would check this on the day you're going to be fishing to see in real time how fast and how high the water is flowing and check how muddy it is. Um, this one is USGS mobile water data. When you get to this website, you find along the Chattahoochee River, this blue line here flowing from Buford Dam all the way down through um, Johns Creek, Peachtree Corner to Roswell, etc. You find these gray river level gauges. Here's one at McGinnis Ferry. So when you click on that, then you hit this little blue link it takes you to the data about McGinnis Ferry and the gauge height, and it does not show you turbidity on this one. So click on gauge height, and this is what the chart looks like. I have a screenshot I'm gonna show you, but basically the chart shows you that the water goes from low and weightable to extremely high and extremely unweightable in a very short amount of time. So you generally wanna fish Chattahoochee River when the water is low and falling. In this uh, screen grab here, it would be basically probably most fishable below four on the gauge height to the left and above two. Well, two is as low as it goes. So let's go back to map. So go back into that gauge, select turbidity. Most recent value, if you just saw it on that last screen, was 5.5. Basically, you can see that it's low here. It's well below 10, so this means it's good fishing. Turbidity, water, most recent instantaneous value is a 5.5. You see that right there. So here is Buford Dam on our map at mile 348, and down here at Jones Bridge at mile 329. Jones Bridge at 329. So let's do 348 minus 329. So it's 19 river miles. And then what do we divide that by to get the amount of time it takes in hours for the leading edge of the water to reach you at Jones Bridge if you're fishing tomorrow? So we divide that by four. So it will take 4.75 hours for the leading edge of water to leave Buford Dam and reach you if you're fishing at Jones Bridge. So let's round it down to four and a half or four hours. You wanna be out of the water before the leading edge of water meets your fishing spot. Um, like we said, this is really unsafe to be in the water when the leading edge gets to you. Okay, so we said the water will start releasing from, from Buford Dam at 6 a.m. And so if you add four hours to that, 4.75 rounded down, then you get 10 a.m. So this is the window in which you can fish. So if you got out to Jones Bridge at 7 a.m. at first light or so, you'd have three hours to fish till 10 until the leading edge of water got to you. Well, if you wanted to fish tomorrow for longer than three hours, what would you need to do? Go further downstream. Uh, you'd need to start at Island Ford or something like that and buy yourself a little bit more time. 
So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Um, I hope that this can become a resource for everyone, uh, for newbies. If you know anybody that doesn't understand this stuff or needs to learn it, uh, I hope that you'll send it their way. Send them this link to the video. And if you like the video, I hope you'll hit the like button and subscribe and um, stay fishy and we'll see you in the next one. What's up, Phil? Making YouTube videos. Hi, yeah. YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Sweet. Yeah, this is ideal.